Welcome back. It's your boy Fresh. And I'm Mary and we are a co-op of nerds and today we are going to be talking about our Gen Con 2023 experience. But before we begin, don't forget to give us a like, a subscribe, and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Right, so Gen Con is the, for those of you who don't know, Gen Con is the largest North American board game convention. Uh, it's second in the world to uh, Eschenspiel, which is in Essen, Germany. Uh, they broke their own attendance record, 70,000 people. Well, greater than 70,000 people were in attendance. You could tell. <laughs> you could feel it. You could smell it. <laughs> and you could feel it. Uh, so we actually di didn't even really get to talk about this because you had to leave in the middle of Gen Con to go to Indonesia. Yeah, I got to go the first two days. Yeah. Instead of the, the weekend days because I had to leave on Saturday. So we had a four-day pass, but I only got to use two days. Of yeah. It. So, yeah, man, it was... So, I guess, elephant in the room, there was a trading card game named Lorcana. Yes. That was released. Um, so, that is like Magic the Gathering, but with Disney characters. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was, I've never seen a release. I don't, I don't know if, oh man, I forget who made that. Eh, it's not going to come to me. But... I don't, I don't know if it was the designer or the publisher that kind of beefed this release or if it was just maybe not the best idea to do it at such a busy place like Gen Con, but people were lining up for at least six hours mm -hmm. to get their hands on packs of a trading card game. And they were not, they were random packs, so you didn't even know what cards mm -hmm. you were going to be getting. Yeah, so just like Magic the Gathering, where you open a booster pack, you have no idea what's in it. You know, you, it, I'm sure they have some sort of standard breakdown of 10 commons, you know, four uncommons, and one rare. I'm sure they have something similar to that, to their pack structure. Uh, people were basically, it, it, it's like it almost, it stopped being about the game and started being about resellers, mm -hmm. which I understand, you know, everyone, I don't like resellers because you're taking product away from the actual fans and you just spike up the prices. You know, they did that with PS5, they did that with Xbox. I mean, I get it, you, you know, it's easy money if you can get in early. Um, but it, it was six hours people are po like opening the packs and posting them on ebay ebay immediately like in they're still in line they're still paying for the pack and they've already posted it um i mean we saw the signs for it coming in and we we're like oh maybe we could get like an elsa card for grace or something that'd be kind of cool yeah and then we saw the line and we're mm -hmm. like wow no why yeah. like you're wasting your entire gen con for a couple of cards yeah I'd rather just wait until it's potentially able to be bought. Well, yeah. It, it, or is it like you can only ever buy this at Gen Con? No. So it goes on sale in two weeks. Yeah, I can wait. So, yeah, you spent six hours at Gen Con standing shoulder to shoulder with a lot of people for an extra two weeks, two weeks early. So, you know, it is what it is. But the problem is that huge line running through the vendor hall when it's yeah. already at very high capacity just made that like that there's basically the how they do their rows is like 100 blocks so it starts with 100 row and it goes all the way to 3000 mm -hmm. basically 2500 to 3000 was practically impassable impassable mm -hmm. yes that's a good word we the dice tower was in there and we tried i don't know five or six times to go say hi to the guys and just literally 
couldn't get through and there were so many people around them it's like well they're so busy I don't want to just you know bother them that's where I think we saw uh, Nick with the Brothers Murph was in that area so again it was so crowded so jam-packed I didn't want to say anything you know stop in the middle of this chaos to, to talk to somebody um, a lot of people and I felt like the booths were too close together mm -hmm. I don't know if they packed in more booths this year than they typically do um, more booths in the same amount of space of course the line for Lorcana didn't just go through the vendor hall it also went into like the the hall outside of the vendor hall we're all the way outside yeah so it just getting out of the vendor hall to get a you know breath of fresh air and kind of try to move around there to move to other places you couldn't do that really either because there was the big line out there right. now the line i'm going to show in the video that is not the Lorcana line that is the will call line so basically if you bought your everyone has to buy their tickets online and then you can either pay it's like 15 or 20 bucks to have them mail them to you or do will call so a lot of people did will clear. call um how long did it take us to walk that line 10 15 minutes from beginning to end probably we we were you know since we weren't waiting in line we were walking briskly uh mm -hmm. yeah and that line had been open for that was day technically the line opens wednesday the con starts thursday so that was thursday, about thursday afternoon mm -hmm. th that line was still going i mean it went all the way to to saturday because me and the kids went on saturday and there's that's the line was still there so um now obviously it's not the same people but still people just yeah going for will call i was told the line goes quick but i don't know yeah i i used to do it you know if i oh i could save 20 bucks and i would go on wednesday and you probably were in line for four hours that wasn't quite as long as what that one was but about four hours you'd get through will call i paid 20 bucks for four hours yeah that's five that's like making five bucks an hour that's not too bad um especially i think that one year we both did it and so that's eight hours yeah separately because <laughs> of work schedules so yeah yeah because the other person has to be there to show their id mm -hmm. to get the badge. you can't pick up someone else's badge which is a little silly um so sort of just just general thoughts uh again we haven't really discussed this because you left um i guess i couldn't help but get over the feeling that maybe i got too old for gen con <laughs> or too busy for gen con because how we go is we we go thursday and friday we go basically when the kids are at school or daycare mm-hmm then when Saturday hits, we, we stop going Sunday. Sunday's thought the entire building smells like feet. <laughs> like it, the doors. It, not, it when smells you, like feet anyways, but like the Sunday, level of feet. Yes, Sunday, cause like when you pull on those big doors, it kind of creates a vacuum. So you just get this foot smell. <laughs> it feels like you just got kicked in the face like by 10 different people. So like I used to, I used to literally hold <laughs> hold my breath as I opened that door because I knew the foot smell was I coming. I was holding in. my breath anyways. I was like, <laughs> I, I'm not generally too much of a germaphobe. I'm a clean freak, but not necessarily a germaphobe. But I was getting ready to travel, so I was a little nervous about getting sick before traveling, and like I was just terrified everywhere I went because it just felt like. If anybody in that entire building sneezed, it was going on yeah. everybody yeah. because we were so crammed mm -hmm. in there. Mm -hmm. uh, so Saturday we would try to get a babysitter and then do as much of the convention as possible. It, it feels like that shortened schedule. Like we've never been able to see all of Gen Con. It's just, it's just too big. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're get a babysitter the whole time maybe you could you'd have to rush some things but it feels like it got so big with our small s windows you know the window on thursday the window on friday trying to find a babysitter match their window on saturday 
that I, I don't know, it felt like we spent this is going to cost you about four hundred dollars for two four day passes plus four days of parking it'll cost you about four hundred dollars and it doesn't include food even the the uh food truck lines were too long the, we just we were excited about the food truck lines they said they had over 40 food yeah over trucks. 40 trucks i think each one had about 30 people in line and there's something about me i hate lines but also it was like pet hot outside and it, was, it hot. was scorching hot outside there was no way that we could wait in the heat that long for some food. Mm -hmm. I had packed a few snacks, so yeah, we, we had some snacks. I think the time. first day I had a bag of pretzels for eight hours. I had a bag of pretzels. Because again, it's like, why don't you don't want to sit around and, you know, we got seven hours to get all this, get everything in. So it's like, you know, you really want to sit around and daily dad will need or it's like we gotta go 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 like i said we didn't even make it to lucas oil we made it to one of the hotels one room in one of the hotels like gen con is yeah and I didn't in all the surrounding like hotels a, the, the flea rummage market. sale at flea yeah. market yeah like that i didn't know that they had one that was totally cool mm -hmm. um so to your point about the vendor hall our favorite thing to do at gen con is they go there, play brand new games, mm -hmm. or games that aren't even out yet, and then either sort of make a mental note, like, hey, this comes out in two months, let's buy it when it comes out, or B, pick it up there. Mm -hmm. Or C, realize the game's not meant for us, and just, you know, move on. And a lot of times, not all the time, but there are a lot of times when they're the author of the game, if it's a newer game, is there, yeah, which yeah. is pretty cool, too. Yeah, you get you get taught by the designer of the game how to play the game. You get to meet them and talk to them. I feel like that was the one thing we didn't get to do any of. I think the whole time we were there, we played two games. Yeah. I would say traditionally we probably play thirty. Um, and we did lose Saturday, and that that's a big day for for testing. But Saturday was maybe even busier than Thursday or Friday. Um, they had demo tables, but it felt like there was more focused on selling yeah. than demoing. It Normally, there's enough demo tables where there's always a free demo table. Right. You can it may not up. be the game you want. Right. Like, they'll have three or four games that they're trying to sell. They'll have three or four demo tables. The one that's open is like, eh, I really wanted that one over there, but we'll try this one. And sometimes you like it, sometimes you don't. Um, but this time, it felt like there were no free demo tables and the demo tables with the games that you did want to try had lines there was like yes. a line to the yes. demo table and then and then they were doing this thing where you could buy a demo so you would pay money to sort of reserve a spot for a demo mm. yeah. um which then it's like we paid 400 dollars to get in the door now i gotta pay more money to play the game to decide if i want to pay more money to buy it like, man, that, you start adding up all these costs, you know, if we did those pay demos, that's a lot. Like, we, we played two games. One was 13 years old. Yeah. What was the other game we played? Uh, the, uh, the Perfect Shot. Perfect Shot. Well, that was a new game. Mm -hmm. Played it, liked it, bought it. But that was at the kids' area. Mm -hmm. And we thought our kids would get a kick out of that game. Mm -hmm. Uh... That, that was it. It was like you couldn't even... Not only could you not play a game, I didn't even feel like I got to approach the demo table and at least watch the game from afar. It was like there was just a, the people sitting down, a wall of people surrounding them, and you're trying to like peek over their heads and look to see what they're even playing. And, you know, obviously Gen Con is nice for us because we don't have to travel. We get to sleep in our own beds. Yeah. We don't have to we pay for hotels. We are lucky to be in Indianapolis. But, man, I don't... You know, I, I think of, like, Dice Tower Retreat. And, and that requires flight. We didn't get a rental car. I think next time we probably would, just so we could do a little 
more exploring. But we achieve our goal by going there and playing the whole time we're playing games that yeah. we've never played before. Yeah. Sometimes we'll play, I think we played one or so games that we had played before, but uh -huh. we try to make it all games we've never played before. So we get to try them out. Right. If we like them, then we can order it on the internet or go right. buy it at our local game store. Right. The, the other thing about Gen Con, it, it's all, not all, there's a bunch of new games available for sale. And that's sort of the appeal. You go there, you get the game as it's being released. These games sold out so fast. And we experienced this a couple of years ago with Unmatched. Where it was like, as soon as the gates open, we walk straight to the, um, was it? Mo not Modane. Mondo? Mongo? Was that the one with Carnival or the circus one? No, I'm talking about Unmatched. Oh, Unmatched. Yeah, we walked straight over there. And we walked straight over there and it sold out. And the same thing happened here. We walked walk straight in. As soon as they open, they're sold out. Like just, boom, they're gone. Also, um, you can't walk straight in because the, the crowd pouring yeah, in. Yeah. It's so many people that like, look at Trample. Although, you know, they say... There, there, there was a, 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 a small Trample when the, the gates first opened on Thursday. We, we weren't there at that time. We, we went, we got there maybe two hours after the gates opened. We had- They, they had signs out to be courteous and not trample people, mm -hmm. but- I mean, that, that happens every year. It, it, probably it's Lorcana, uh, if I had to guess. Like when that line first starts, mm -hmm. people just rush into Lorcana and it just, that was crazy. But we didn't get to socialize. We didn't get to play games. We didn't get to talk to other channels. You know, we were really looking forward to meet meeting Blackboard Gaming. Unless you have there's cell phone number, there's there's no way you could ever you're finding a needle in a haystack when there's seventy thousand people there. So I don't know. I Although we did find the Meeple Society, we did we did a find them. Times. <laughs> we did find, well, we were we scheduled but one. We passed by them when they were testing yeah. a game. I was like, "Hey, we see you again." <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess that, that's. Uh, <laughs> um, I, but anyway, so I'm, I'm a little, a little scatterbrained, so I apologize for that. But um, all the new hotness. Well, I pack a lot of games on Kickstarter. And a lot of games on Kickstarter are unveiled to the public there. So it felt like a lot of the new hotness I either already have or should be arriving in the next couple of weeks. So it's like, well, I don't know. I, What do you think? I think you get enough off Kickstarter. <laughs> and we should be fine. I just, I don't, I, I, maybe it was COVID, but I can't deal with crowds like that anymore I, I don't i don't mind i mean sieg was fine sieg yeah. was a lot of people and at times yeah. you know shoulder to shoulder with people but still i felt fine you, you could take a step back away from the booth at sieg because i don't like when strangers touch me i can take a step back now no one's rubbing my shoulders i can kind of you know spread out a little bit and i'm fine mm -hmm. there you that that is you have to go outside of the building out and even then you better pick the right door because you could you know, like i said the lorcana line went all the way outside the will call line went all the way outside there's lots of smokers because it's you know seventy thousand people there's going to be smokers so but yeah you i just i don't know but maybe we got too old or maybe we just need to get a four-day babysitter um, Before I'd want to go back. Yeah, or I just think I think I'd rather go so to so many people. If they had a bigger, if they, they I don't know how it it out. bigger. Well, I know that the they convention center is bigger. <laughs> the convention center is big, but they need to keep it there and then add like a second vendor hall with. Yeah, because it's just it's it's not enough space. I thought because they've got this. I always call it the cafeteria area. I don't, I don't know what the heck it is. It's outside the vendor hall. I always thought, why don't you take your demo games out there? It's a little more area to breathe. 
pay a couple employees to go out there and teach games and all that. Well, there were a lot of booths that did have that, but again, you well, had to Some pay. of those were tournaments. There were tournaments. So, yes. like, Unmatched was a tournament. You could pay to participate in a tournament, which we would get wrecked. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Unmatched got kind of crazy competitive. Mm -hmm. uh, well, they had some pretty good... Uh... Yeah, it's kind of like the Street Fighter, where you get those big giant Street Fighter tournaments, you get big giant unmatched tournaments. So I think I think next year we might try to do Dice Tower Retreat or Dice Tower East or Dice Tower Cruise, and maybe skip Gen Con. I don't want to pay four hundred bucks to shop. You can shop for free online. I smell people's feet. Or smell people. Well, I normally I pay a little extra than 400 to smell someone's feet. <laughs> but you've heard us blab on long enough. Let's look at some pickups. <clears throat> All right. So Mary went a little, a little, I've ridiculed you in the past for your Gen Con purchases and you really opened up the throttle on this well, this year. Well, because I couldn't test anything. So I'm like, well, <laughs> that looks good. I might as well try it. Yeah. So your first game, Tranquility. This is a little, little game. Look at that. I do like the little games. Yeah. Lucky Duck. We like Lucky Duck. Lucky Duck's mm -hmm. really good. Cooperative card game. 20 minutes, one to five players. Not a whole lot on here. Yeah, know. you're trying to, I think, guide a ship. It's a cooperative card game where you fill the sea with islands and guide the ship home. Okay. This is another one you bought, which I was shocked. Because it's competitive, I know. Mind bug, first contact. The reason she bought it is right there at Axel Odo. Axel Odo's are pretty cool. It was very, I like colorful. Like colorful games. Yes, but this is like the exact opposite game you like. It's 1v1 fight to the death. Card game. Yep, good. A dueling card game. And you know what Magic you'll... Gathering is? A dueling card game. Yeah, but that's, it's real thinky. It's real thinky. And your favorite game is Unmatched, so you should like it just fine. I'm saying I'm going to wreck you. <laughs> We'll see. This is another one. We, we, we both, we actually, this is the one game we'd actually need to get to play. Uh, perfect Shot. Mm -hmm. So you're a wildlife photographer and you're trying to uh, fill a scrapbook full of animal pictures. Uh, we thought this one would be cute for the kids. It's easy. It's very easy. Very easy. You just have like this slot and you put there a card in it. And the cards have holes in them. So that's where like the camera lenses are. Yeah. And you have to see what animals, um, mm -hmm. so from the card underneath, what animals you can capture in the picture. Right. Um, and you get, uh, you know, a token for every animal that you get. And mm -hmm. then you get a card that you fill up with the tokens and see who can get the most goals and win. Yeah. I think you actually won the demo of that, didn't you? I did. I won the other one. That we didn't buy because we buy the one she buys, she wins. Yummy, yummy, monster tummy. Uh, so this is our, we talk about monsters a lot with the kids. Mm -hmm. Uh, thought this would, I think it just look cute. I don't even think we it's actually. A, it's a matching color game and we thought it would be nice and easy for the kids and. I think you fun. picked all four of these. Yeah, I did. And now we'll get to a couple games that maybe we both picked. <laughs> Contra, the board game. How can I pass Contra? So it's probably really, really difficult it to is, dial she said, she said this is a hard game. Uh, one to four players. Cooperative. Run and gun action. Konami. What do you want me to do? How am I supposed to pass that? Along the same vein, same designer, Mega Man Adventures, another cooperative uh, video game. I think uh, 
It joined forces Mega Man, Proto Man, Rush. So yeah, there's yeah, one to four players are different different Mega Man characters work together, go through, fight the bosses. You know, classic Mega Man. Yeah, I like Mega Man. So this is one the kids picked out. Like I said, on Saturday we went, I took the kids. That was okay. Georgie wanted to be carried a lot towards the end. Told you to get a stroller. Yeah, he's too big for a stroller. So I just screamed at him. Manza! I don't know what that means in German. Hmm. But it is a racing game. So basically the track has all these different colors on it and you roll six dice and you'll use the dice the color of the dice to move to that part of the track so sometimes you can get all six colors to line up and have a really good turn sometimes you roll a dice and can't move at all mm. okay so so who won that game when you played it at gen con grace okay so that's why she really won it <laughs> our kids are uh <clears throat> extremely competitive <laughs> Uh, this is one that Z Garcia on the Dice Tower talks about all the time. We saw this at the garage sale and thought, what the heck? The Bloody Inn, I think it was uh, only 20 bucks. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is a game where you're killing people at the hotel and trying to hide their bodies from the authorities and other patrons. This is a series that we really love. Mm -hmm. uh, it's another cooperative game. They they made three of them kind of back to back to back, and the third one was not very loved. We that that's the one. Sky? Yeah, that's the one we yeah. don't own. Mm -hmm. um, I've never heard anyone say anything positive about it. Then they probably took like a ten years off. Now they made Forbidden Jungle. So this is another cooperative game. We, I hate it. They stuck with this tin. I don't know. I guess to fit with the other three, but um, Apple is the one. Our my sister in law is the one that got us. Um, I think was it Forbidden Jungle, or no, not Jungle. Um, Forbidden uh, Island. Desert and Island. I think she got us Forbidden Island. Okay. <clears throat> we got Blazon. I thought uh, this was a really cool idea. Yeah, so you, it, I guess Blazon is the medieval art of decorating your shield. Mm -hmm. uh, and they use real, like, components of real shields. The That's what the guy said when he was talking about it. No, he's talking about real crests. Yeah, real okay. crests. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's talking about, like, actual shield pieces. No, 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 no. <laughs> but, like, they use, like, real... Yeah. The real... What real crest looks like. <clears throat> Yeah, so you're, you're trying to decorate your shield by following these rules. It kind of sounded a little like, uh, what's that dice game with the window panes? Sagrado? Yes. Kind of a little Sagrado where you got these rules about what you can place next to what. You just grabbed this one in the middle of a checkout. I don't even think you read this one. It was so pretty. Starry night sky. Oh, pretty. It really looked pretty. Uh, so this is two to four. Let the stars be a guide. Welcome to Starry Night Sky. Explore the night sky with your trusted telescope. Gaze across the heavens. Locate new stars and map them onto new constellations. Mm -hmm. hm. Making constellations. That yeah. looked fun. Okay. Uh, the kids also picked this one up. Ghost in the Attic, the game that you play in the dark. Yes, we have played this in the dark. That's an oddly shaped box. It is an extremely oddly shaped I think it's supposed to look like a house. It's, I mean, it's cool, but it's also frustrating. Yeah, I have a feeling this will be too tall for the Calyx. That's... I think it'll fit in the Calyx. I don't think, think it's so? too tall for the Calyx, no. But All right. it's just weird. So the ghost lights up, and then the board is glow in the dark. Mm -hmm. So um, with the two of them, you can play this in the dark. Uh, there's 
three characters, a boy, a girl, and a dog, and you are trying to get... Were you always the dog? I'm sorry, did you just interrupt me? <laughs> so you can play as any character. Yes, I move the dog the most. <laughs> You can play as any character you're trying to escape the house before the ghost gets to the door. Um, but it's cooperative. So you spin and you either roll or move one space, two spaces, or move the ghost. And if the ghost hits you, you gotta go back. This is one. Um, we'll, we'll put this in my stack. I think I was more excited about this than you. The Quest Kids. So this is a dungeon crawler for the youngins. It's their first, it's like an introductory dungeon crawler for kids. That's right. It teaches them a different game mechanics mm -hmm. that kids would eventually learn um, when they become heavier board gamers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you're walking through this dungeon, you need to make decisions, you need to help your fellow teammates defeat enemies by matching symbols, and you pick up like weapons and items and stuff to, to accumulate these symbols and there's a be kind is it be kind card or, or like there's a card where like you get a reward for being kind to somebody else right yeah and yeah. helping them yeah. but then you get rewards for doing that. for killing the monster you get a reward for helping so yeah teaches cooperation this is a game uh i bought this on saturday when you weren't there uh wild tilted West. Tiled, wild Tiled West. Wild Tiled West, that's what I said. Uh, one to five players. Um, it kind of reminded me of, I know you hate this movie. Is it Rango? Rango. Uh, where it's like Old West, but with animals. I don't know why that movie was just... I, I don't hate that. I really like the aesthetic of that movie. I mean, you could say Johnny Depp gets a little extra Johnny Depp-y. At certain points in that movie, but uh, uh, I like yeah. Johnny Depp too. I just I draft tiles, build new towns across the prairie, and help your settlement grow. That's pretty cool. Defend I like defend your citizens from no building. good rotten outlaws. Strike it rich in the mines, or risk it all at the card table. That looks fun. Yeah, polynomino, silly city building. You know, I like it. So I think this is actually pronounced, I don't know how this is that, pronounced. So when they sold it to us. He said Jerusalem. He said Jerusalem. But that does not look like a J. It looks like an I. But in Hebrew, isn't uh, an oh, I, I like. Well, whatever you're going to say. Have you seen Indiana answers. Jones? No. In Indiana Jones, he has to cross the tiles and spell Jehovah. And so he goes for the J and then Sean Connery's like, Jehovah starts with an I, and so he actually has to go to the I. Ah. That's the only reason I think okay. maybe it could be pronounced Jerusalem. Right, it's Jerusalem, like but spelled with an I. Okay. It, I don't know. I'll buy that. I, I may be wrong, but I just wrong. remember Indiana Jones in that part. Well, so. Jesus will get you if, if you're lying. <laughs> <laughs> so, speaking of Jesus, this is a game in which you're trying to sit as close to the at the last supper right? at the last time you're trying to sit i don't think you're at the actual dinner i think you're just at the restaurant or whatever and you're trying to hear i don't know that they were at a restaurant honey but they had a uh, waiter okay let's see um very few were able to imagine that this would be their last supper together in this game, you'll take on the role of a community, community of the prophet's followers, trying to get closer to him and his apostles in search of inspiration. That doesn't sound like you're actually at the Last Supper. You need to get closer to Jesus, because if you could but touch the clothing on his body, then he would cure you. Oh. All right. I mean, that's what they said. I think I picked that one up. But, my child, it is your faith that has healed you. Gartenbau. So we already have this game. 
This is deluxe wooden tiles. It was so excited. Garden Bow is like one of my new favorite games. And then mm -hmm. you could get the wooden components. It was like 20 bucks. I did yeah. not think that that was bad at all. No. And I think what we'll try to do, I don't know if it'll work, is if we could fit those components in the old box. Just combine yeah. them. Combine them. Uh, so we got this one at the uh flea market. market victorian masterminds this was dirt cheap nine bucks nine bucks um you are uh a villain in victorian kind of steampunk era and uh send your agents across the world to do your building construct nefarious machines Capture great buildings, complete mis missions. It looked cool, but I guess it just didn't do well it, at all. I don't. That doesn't necessarily mean that it didn't do well. I don't. I don't honestly know how it did. However, it was sitting <laughs> with other games yeah. that were supposed to be like overstock or something. Like they stocked too many of them. Maybe. So there were a bunch of games in this corner that were cheaper because mm -hmm. they had a bunch of extras. Yeah. Last game. Grim Forest. This game is cute. It's so cute. <laughs> and a little dark. And a little dark, yeah. We played this with the Meeple Society. They, uh -huh. they brought it over. And um, I really enjoyed it. It's yeah. the story of the three little pigs. Right. You have to build a, a house out yeah. of bricks and um, wood, wood and hay. hay. And whoever builds three houses first wins well I, it's, I don't even think that, that that's when the game ends is when right, someone yeah, builds three yeah. houses and it, there's a, a series of victory points and things right and, and there's all sorts of other characters that pop up like here they got cinderella the bridge troll so you can help or harm the other players you can send the big bad wolf at each other's um stuff like that it, it was it was pretty interesting i think we liked it more than they did i think they actually got rid of their copy yeah uh but uh again this was really really cheap it's used so you know if you sell your used board games for pretty cheap you'll sell them pretty quick uh so yeah so that was it Sorry, this one was a little more negative than most of our videos. We try to try to be positive people, but We've got a lot of fun new games to try. We do have a lot of fun new games to try, but we didn't get to play them before we bought them. We'll see. And that's unfortunate. Let us know down in the comments section if you've been to Gen Con and uh, what do you think about being shoulder to shoulder with seventy thousand people? And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Hey, Pumpkin. Mm -hmm. You just flew back in from Indonesia. Mm -hmm. Are your arms tired? <laughs> <laughs>